What's up, everybody? My name is Hank. Um, what day is it today? Friday. Today's Friday. Uh, and I got my Billy Joel shirt on from the concert in Charlotte. So you can say goodbye to Hollywood and welcome to Bowfin Country. Today, actually, uh, I got a short video. Um, about my favorite native species of fish. It's a bowfin. Scientific name, Amia calva. It's a very unique animal, uh, native only to North America. It's got a pretty wide range, but I'm gonna say eastern half of the continent mostly. A little bit in the upper Midwest and the Southwest, but um, the Bowfin's range stretches basically from, you know, the Gulf states, the Gulf Coast states, to um, southern Canada. Um, there are some areas where you just don't find them. Uh, little parts of New England, for example. Uh, it's weird. They just aren't around. Um, but a pretty common fish, but not one that you hear about, or a fish that is easily caught like you don't they're everywhere but you don't catch them a lot um, but they are caught often enough especially in tournaments where you see an angler like fighting a big bowfin thinking I got a game changer this is a 12 pound bass I'm gonna I'm gonna jump up the standings here at least take home the big bass prize and then they are disappointed to find out that what they thought was a 10 pound bass is actually a five pound bowfin. Um, they just fight really, really hard. There are reasons for that uh, that I'll get into in a moment when I explain some of the details in this video. But first, let me talk about the place where I caught this fish. Uh, it's 2023, and for the third year in a row, I am caught up in an amazing Angler of the Year points race. Uh, this year, like last year, it's with Central Carolina Kayak Fishing, or CCKF, as it's known. Um, yeah, um, got my work cut out for me, um, but it's a tight race, and I recently made up some ground in it. So we're going into the last two events of the season. I've got to do well, and the next event is on the Cape Fear River. So I started pre-fishing early for this event to get a sense of what was going on. Um, the hummingbird hanging around right here. If it comes in, it'll be pretty amazing. No, it went away again. Um, anyway, Cape Fear River. Uh, I've been pre-fishing it ahead of this event, scouting some water, hitting some old spots, hitting some new spots. And on this day, I was actually, I had been in a new area of water. But when I say that, you gotta realize that the Cape Fear River has miles and miles of water that really just goes unfished. Um, because of the remote areas that it flows through, there just aren't a lot of ramps or access points on the river. The river also has high, steep banks, so those primitive combat launches for kayaks, they're hard to do, especially if you're alone. So it's an interesting place. I love it. I've been fishing it for two decades. I'm in my second decade now. Um, uh, when I moved to North Carolina about 20 years ago, I uh, immediately noticed that the headwaters of the Cape Fear were at the base of Jordan um, Lake. And I got really excited. You know, the Cape Fear, it just has that iconic southern waterway status. Part of that is due to the great um, novel, the crime novel, and the two films that are based on that novel, uh, the most recent one being Scorsese's uh, adaptation uh, from the early 90s. So beautiful waterway, iconic status. What I didn't know when I started fishing it was just how loaded the river is with different species. Gars, catfishes, bowfin, all the sunfishes and 
bass species. Um, I've seen big crappie come out of there too. Uh, so it's a really interesting waterway and the farther you go downstream the more you get the anadromous uh, fish runs, you know, the, stri the saltwater striped bass, the ocean run stripers and shad and stuff like that. So it's really a fun river to fish. The upper section where I have mostly fished it is great fun. And that's where I went. I went to the standard location, uh, the Avon's Ferry boat ramp. I was fishing around, just scouting some spots, looking in some areas. And what you'll see in this video was I was just heading back uh, to the ramp. I was done after a half day of tree fishing. I had um, uh, to be somewhere for lunch, so I was pedaling back to the ramp and in the bite FD I can you know have a sustained kind of leisurely yeah I'm pedaling but I'm not trying too hard I can move at about two and a half to three miles an hour um, and I think I was in that two and a half mile per hour range as you'll see here I was just goofing around throwing a buzz bait uh, as I went down the river and I was throwing it at a shallow bank um, that had a lot of lay downs on it. You're going to see those in the video. A lot of wood on the river bank there. Um, and I knew the area well. I had fished it uh, many times. I knew that when you threw, when you throw top water at some of those areas, fish will be sitting down in those lay downs in those trees and they'll just come up and blast the lure and it's a lot of fun. So I was just moving and throwing a buzz bait. The buzz bait I was throwing was this one. This is actually still slightly bent out of shape. Actually, if I can get that. Uh, that's a little better. Um, this is a Stripe, stripe King uh, buzz bait. If you look at it here, you can see the blades got, um, and I don't know if you can get the reflection. Um, it's got some sparkle on it. It's interesting. It's a painted blade. Uh, it's kind of almost like a striped bass look to it, which I thought was appropriate because uh, while most of the fish in that river are native species, uh, hybrid stripers were introduced into Jordan Lake and some of them are down in the upper end of the river. Um, so I threw this white buzz bait you can see it has a trailer hook. It was right out of the package when I threw it, um, which is to say um, the hooks were really, really sharp. In fact, they're just, I just stuck myself. They're kind of sticky. So I, everything still slightly bent out of shape from what that bowfin did to this. When the fight was over, this was a, a Z shape. It went like that. It bent this totally around. Um, I was throwing this and just cranking it. You know, I had a bait caster. I had it rigged up on a bait caster. Oh no, it wasn't a bait caster. It was um, um, a heavier, longer spinning rod, uh, a yak rod, spinning rod. I don't even know why it was on there. Normally, I would throw this on one of my bait casters, but I was um, I was just grabbing stuff and going in the morning. So I guess I had it, and uh, yeah, uh, the bowfin that I caught, as you'll see in this video, was uh, sitting in one of those lay downs. So I was just goofing around, fishing, just throw, retrieve, throw, retrieve. You'll see I was making some pretty good casts uh, into some of the shadier areas under those, along those banks, um, hoping that I would get a good bite. And I did. Uh, the bowfin came up uh, a couple feet after the lure passed over a uh, lay down and the bowfin just swirled on it. Bowfin missed it. And let me explain what happened next. I saw the big swirl and what I did was I just, you'll see for a second, I just stopped. Like there's a moment where I just, and then I pick up the retrieve. What I did was I just let that lure fall just going like this through the water column and I wanted to give that fish a chance to grab it. I didn't know what it was yet but it was a big swirl so I knew it was a good fish. Um, what happened 
was I got really lucky with those sharp hooks. Uh, Bowfin's mouth is a really interesting place. You don't ever want to go in there, though. Um, if you look at their skull, like most fishes, they have this kind of like, you know, a skull like this, and like a bass flares out, opens its mouth. If you look at a catfish or a pike, um, or yeah, like pike and muskies and stuff, they have more of that duck kind of skull. Well, a bowfin is actually has something in between the two. Like their skull is kind of compressed and kind of wide, but it's not exactly flat and it's not exactly perpendicular uh, like you see in like a trout, you know. Um, their frontal area is built in a really unique way. They're a unique species. There's no other member of their family. Um, and the reason they have um, a unique design is because of something that's oh, a couple unusual features. First of all, the scientific name is Amia calva. Calva in Latin means bald or smooth. Bowfin don't have any scales on their heads. So when they move through the water, they are very hydrodynamic, more so than I think any other freshwater species. They just cut through the water in an amazing way because of that smooth skull or that smooth skin on their skull. Um, another feature that they have is a plate right here. So when you look at a fish, its jaw and its gills have this kind of split, right? Well, they have a plate that protects that area. And that's going to come into play later uh, when I handle the fish in the kayak. Third item is the mouth itself. It's got a kind of bear trap sort of design to it, right? It's got a half circle kind of look to it. And they have rows of tiny, really uh, conical teeth, like think of miniature dog teeth. Like they're, they're not sharp on the sides. They're not serrated like a pike, but they're pointy. Um, the older fish sometimes, you know, they won't have as many or they'll be kind of worn down doesn't matter. You put your hand in that mouth and it shuts. It shuts with force. And the reason for that is because their head is just bone and muscle. That's it. There's barely any meat in there. Um, it's just bone and muscle. It's amazing how those animals have evolved to just crush their prey. So a pike or a guard will just grab something, right? They grab it, something's coming along, and they snap on it, and they kind of, you know, hold it. They'll mash it up, they'll bite it, whatever they got to do, they'll turn it, and they'll eat it. Um, bass or catfish, they just inhale, right? They create a vacuum. Well, bowfin do that too, but when that mouth closes, it's just tooth and bone and muscle just, you can feel it. It's a very specific type of bite. Unfortunately, I did not feel it in this video because I, the fish missed the bait, and then when I, I paused, I had set the hook, and the fish already had it in its mouth. When a bowfin grabs a moving bait, it does something really brutal to that bait. Um, so a lot of people complain about you know the fish because it destroys them. Lures. I used to have a collection, actually I might still have it, of just broken stuff that Bofin had destroyed. Crankbaits, spinnerbaits, buzzbaits, pop bars, spooks, uh, even jigs, like just hooks they straighten, um, uh, split rings that had come apart, wires all bent out of shape. Uh, Lures that were like you know think of like a like a like a balsa crankbait like they were just sawdust. Uh, so they do really nasty things to lures. This bowfin definitely did that to the spinner bait that I had, but when it grabbed the bait, see it's got the trailer hook 
and the main hook. The main hook, I got really lucky. There's just a little bit of an area in the bowfin's mouth where you can get a good hook set in the front, and it got right in there behind the teeth. Um, if it had gotten in front of the teeth, I don't think I would have kept that fish on the line for long. The other thing that happened was that the trailer hook caught the fish on the outside of the mouth. So I had the fish hooked on the inside and the outside of the mouth. And what that did was it kind of, it made for a slightly less interesting fight. You'll see the fish did fight for a bit, but then I think that second hook got in there after it rolled or jumped. Um, and uh, the fish just kind of went dead for a minute. Then I went to scoop the fish in the net. I got the net most of the way out of the water. So here's my net. You can see this net's got a pretty big, deep basket, right? I was in the boat and I had the net like this. So I'm gonna say I had about half or maybe more of the net out of the water with the bowfin in the basket. That bowfin jumped straight out of the net. It was still hooked. You'll see it happens on the side of the screen or of the shot. And that fish was not happy. It came to life again, splashed around, ran around the front, then I got it back in the net. And what happened was that it got hooked. One of those hooks came loose and I couldn't get the fish in the net because it was hooked down here. So what I had to do was basically invert the net and get the fish in that way. So that's what I did. And um, thankfully I was, uh, you know, I've been around the block. I know how to net a fish that's hooked on the outside of the, um, of the netting and it worked out that way. But I knew that that fish was still kind of green. Landing a bowfin, wait, let me, hooking a bowfin is pretty tough because of that bony mouth and because of just the damage they do when they fight. Like they break a lot of lines, things like that. Um, especially monofilament, like I was using. Uh, landing a bowfin is also pretty delicate. As you saw, it jumped out, of, as you're going to see, it jumps out of the net, then it gets tangled up. I managed to get it in there without any injury to the fish, which was also lucky because that doesn't always happen. Um, this fish had been injured. If you look, it's missing its left eye. Um, you see it in, the, uh, in one of the stills on here, uh, one of the photographs. Um, they don't, you know, they, they hunt anyway. They've got that lateral line. Um, maybe that's why it missed the lure. I don't know, but yeah, that fish uh, was not going to be denied. Got it in the net, unhooked it quickly because the lure or that one hook was right on the edge of its mouth. Uh, so it was a pretty quick release. But then, you know, I wanted to get a picture with the fish. And notice, and this goes back to that plate. Um, so, pro tip, been fishing for bowfin for a very long time, and one thing that you can do when you catch these fish, don't touch the gills, but when you get under that gill plate, you can pinch that bone, right, and it immobilizes them. They don't always stay still, but I'm going to say 95% of the time, they just lock up the way like when you lip a bass it just kind of paralyzes it um it's a very similar thing um however you still need to put another hand under the fish uh, you don't want to lip a bowfin ever and i'm not saying put your hand in the mouth what you got to do is get two fingers up under that gill plate and then pinch down on the um gullet plate that that plate, that bone that's under there, and that's how you hold them. That's the best way to hold those fish and handle them. Um, you'll see I did that. So watch my left hand as I'm handling the fish in the net, and when I bring it up uh, to show it off. I put it back in the net, uh, took a few pictures on the, on the catch board, and then I let it swim off. Bowfin, I don't really worry about. Um, 
when they're out of the water for that long because uh, they're just really hardy, durable animals and they've got a weird ability to uh, gulp air and metabolize it, I guess, in some way. So um, even a bowfin that's been sitting out of water for a few minutes, once you put it back in the water, it's going to swim off just fine. I kept this one in the net, in the water most of the time. But I think my point is this, as a word of advice. When you handle a bowfin, take your time, be careful, don't hurry. Do not hurry with a bowfin. They've been around for millions of years. They'll, they know every trick in the book. They'll play possum, they get in the kayak, then they go crazy. Before you know it, you've got a hook in your leg. Your bowfin's attached to your hand. You don't want any of that. So take your time, practice um, handling them when you catch them, and don't be afraid of them. Like they're big, they're mean, but if you do everything correctly, you handle it the right way. Anyway, I was very glad that I got this um, this catch on video because uh, I rarely uh, catch bowfin any longer. I used to catch them quite a bit. I used to target them specifically. I love the species. In fact, I made a name for myself as a bowfin angler before I made my, a name for myself as a tournament bass fisherman. Um, so, um, yeah, I love these fish. Uh, don't treat them like trash when you catch them. Return them to the water. They're the reason why um, you catch big bass. They're an important part of the ecosystem. They're a reason why you catch bigger catfish. They're a reason why you catch bigger everything. The bowfin or apex predators, they keep the rest of the food chain where it ought to be. So um, put them back in the water alive, unless you're going to keep them, eat them, or mount them or something, um, and respect these animals. They are beautiful native species. They're unique. And um, really enjoy the fight when you have one on the line. And I hope you will. All right, enjoy this video, uh, and thanks for following. La la la, fun with the buzz bait. Bowfin. Oh, I got a big bowfin and a buzz bait. Yes. 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 Come on. Come on, big bowfin. Got you. Oh, man. 
and then jack it up. Get it, get in there. Nurse. <laughs> he jumped out of the net. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, one more time, buddy. <laughs> Into the net. Yeah. Oh man. You really don't want to cooperate, do you? in the net. Bam! Flip the net on him. Oh man, yeah, fish. <coughs> you got to chill, <coughs> as a poet once said. Whoo, man, look at this. <laughs> oh man, holy cow. Oh, man. Mm. Thank you, buddy. I really needed that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you are my favorite fish on the planet. Now, how do we do this? an eye. 